very brief um, thoughts that I want to share with you this morning, and so I'll be reading our scripture reading. If you don't mind turning in your Bibles, whether you've got the electronic version or you've got your Bible in front of you in the pew, if you will look that up, it's in Matthew chapter 26, and I'll be reading, reading verses 26 and 27. Matthew 26, verses 26 and 27. And uh, I'll just give you a moment to, to get there. Are you, are you there, saints? Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 and 27. Thank you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. We often read this passage of Scripture at our communion services. It's something that we're very familiar with, and it's an important text. I mean, it's important because Jesus is the one we are following. Yes, we are followers of Christ. Isn't that why they called us Christians? We follow Jesus. And so we're very interested, and we pay attention so the things that Jesus did. Here he is celebrating the Passover feast with them. And it says that he gave thanks. You know, the first thing that we teach our kids is to be thankful. I mean, isn't that the first of the social graces? We try to get our kids to learn what it means to say thank you for things. You know, it's something that we start our kids doing, but, you know, in spite of that, some of us still haven't mastered uh, the social grace of saying thanks. And we know how it feels if you, if you do something nice for someone. It's not like you're doing it so you can feel good from them, you know, heaping praise and thanksgiving. But it does feel good when someone recognizes that you have done something nice for them and they say thank you. Would, would you agree with me on that? <clears throat> Well, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in his first letter. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. He says this. I mean, this is really a powerful thought. He says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. What does it say? <clears throat> it says give thanks only when you feel like it. It says give thanks when you, when, when you think it's something good. No, Paul says give thanks in how much? He actually says in all circumstances. Would that include the good and the bad? You know, it reminds me of a story. I couldn't pass up the, the, the opportunity to share this old story. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it happened many decades ago back when people got around more by walking than, and, or riding horses and things like that <clears throat> than using automobiles and motorcycles. I don't know why that would be important to me, but anyhow, uh, uh, Bill and Roy were, had been visiting a friend, and they were going back home, and it was quite a walk, uh, and so they talked amongst themselves as they were going toward home, and it was going to take hours to get home, and they decided that if they cut across this field, that they could cut quite a bit of time off because the road went down a ways and then they had to make a turn down another road and they said hey we'll cut it off by cutting going through this particular field it was not a field that they were particularly familiar with but they took uh, climbed through the fence and they had barbed wi barbed wire fences back in those days uh, I see the RCA dog but you know what barbed wire fences look like I've, cr I've crawled through a few of those uh, back in the day and uh, they were making their way across the field, and they were talking. And all of a sudden, Bill looked over to one side, and he sees this bull running toward them at full speed. And this is a serious situation. And so they decide, we've got to run. And so they started running, and they were a long ways from a fence line. And so they were running for all their worth, and the bull is gaining on them at every step. And finally, Bill says to Roy, Roy, throw up a prayer. We're done for. And Roy, under the, the intensity of the situation, offered up the only prayer that he remembered hearing in the family home. Oh, Lord, for what we're about to receive, may we truly be thankful. 
But it, isn't, that what, isn't that what the Apostle Paul says? He says what? Give thanks in all circumstances. And then he says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Many people say, you know, Pastor, if I could just know what God's will for my life is, I would be satisfied. Well, you know, we have it right here. Be thankful in all circumstances. But then how can Jesus, I mean, think about it, in the context of Jesus celebrating this service, this Passover celebration with his disciples, how is it that Jesus can really be thankful? I mean, if you think about the context in which he says this, he's only a few hours away from being arrested and going to the cross. How can Jesus be thankful at such a time as this? Some have, have suggested that it was just a, a, a matter of form, it was polite, it was a matter of ritual, it was a custom, but I don't believe that that is the reason that Jesus gave thanks. Now, certainly the form that he's following while they're there is the celebration of the Passover, and essentially the Passover feast for the Jews was a time that they gathered annually to remember how God had miraculously freed their ancestors from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And so it was a time to, to just say, thank you, God, for what you have done. But it was more than that. It was also pointing forward to the cross. And when God instituted and gave to the Israelites the Passover feast, it was not just to remember what had happened there in Egypt with them being able to walk out without firing a shot out of the clutches of the most powerful nation on planet Earth at the time, but it was also to point forward, more importantly, to something in the future. And that something was when Jesus, who was going to be the Passover lamb, would forever forgive and forgive the sins of the human family and reconcile the human family to himself through one momentous occasion called the atonement. It was going to happen at the cross. As a matter of fact, Paul says it in his wrote, uh, letter to the Corinthians, in his first letter, 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Paul says it. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. He's the one. He's the one who's going to pay the price for you and for me. And so therefore, I believe that it's very appropriate that Jesus gave thanks, but I submit that he gave this thanks for, for three very important reasons. Number one, he sets an example for us. Isn't that what Jesus is? He is our example. Jesus gave thanks. And every time we eat this bread and drink the fruit of the cup, we're doing it so that we can remember that it was Jesus' sacrifice that forgave our sins. It's only through his sacrifice that we are reconciled to God. It all came through Jesus Christ. So it's appropriate that he set an example for being thankful. <clears throat> but I believe there's a second reason that Jesus was thankful. I believe that Jesus was thankful because of the anticipation that his hour had finally come. You know, most of us, if we were facing arrest and torture and then capital punishment, death by some of the worst means that human beings have invented, you, you wouldn't be looking forward to that. But actually, Jesus said back in John chapter 12 and verse 27, he said, should, should I say, Father, save me from this hour? But then he, Jesus says this, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. So there was a sense of anticipation with Jesus at this moment when he gave thanks. There was this anticipation that what he had come for was about to be accomplished. And finally, I believe that Jesus gave thanks on behalf of every one of us, the people who most needed him. I don't think it's a sin to thank God on behalf of our friends. You know, even if our friends who receive blessings don't thank God, if we recognize that our friends have been blessed, it's okay for us to thank God on their behalf. Jesus was thanking God on our behalf. Indeed, we're commanded that we should rejoice with those who rejoice and Mourn with those who mourn. And our greatest friend Jesus did that for us on that night. 
For us, there's even a greater reason to give thanks. It's for our salvation. With his blood, we were purchased, and with his body, we are freed. Surely, then, giving thanks is the least that we can do today. I read a story about a very wise and grace-filled woman who lived a number of years ago. She was traveling up in the mountains, and as she was traveling through the mountains, she knelt by a, a pure mountain stream to get a drink. And there, as she was getting a drink from the stream, she noticed it caught her eye a most precious stone lying there in the gravel of this stream. And so she reached her hand in, and she picked up this beautiful gemstone that was there in the gravel of this stream. And there she recognized its value. She put it into her bag. As she was making her way down the mountain, she met a man coming up the other way who was traveling, and he was very hungry. And so he offered, I mean, he, he asked her for something to eat. And she being the wise and gracious woman that she was, she opened her bag, and there she was taking some food out to, to share with this man who, who was hungry. And when she opened her bag, the traveler saw in the bottom of her bag the precious gem that she had taken from the stream. And so the traveler said, well, while I'd like the food, I would like that precious gem that you have in your bag even more. And so she, being the wise and gracious woman that she was, she gave him not just the food, but she also gave him this precious gem. Well, the traveler left rejoicing. Not only had he gotten something to eat, but he knew that this stone that the woman had give him, given him was something so valuable that he would have security for the rest of his life. But the story goes, a few days later, he retraced his steps and found the woman again. And he came back and he held out the stone and gave it to her. He said, I've been thinking. I know how valuable this stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give something to me even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me this stone. In the person of Jesus Christ, we have everything that we need for life, and for eternity. And we're rejoicing today. We're rejoicing that we can celebrate what Jesus has given to us in his life. And so I invite you to now prepare for our communion service. We are going to go over to the fellowship hall where we will be able to participate, as Jesus said, in the washing of one another's feet. Uh, if you choose to participate in this service, you are most welcome. If you choose not to, you are welcome to stay here, uh, but please um, remember it's going to be a children's story here, um, which is going to be good, but if you will also quickly meet back here and sit in a pew that has the flowers on, on, the, on the sides so that we can serve you more efficiently when we get back together, but let's celebrate this this ordinance of service, that of humility in the foot washing service, and then let's quickly meet back here together. And I'm praying that God will bless you, that we'll all be blessed as we share in this service today, that the service that celebrates the experience of Jesus Christ in the life. May God bless you as we do that.